So if you haven't used this, uh, this app yesterday for the panel, you can go to this um, HTTP uh, bit.ly okay, okay. um, hands up dash um, app and then post, post your questions and uh, take care, don't put any, anything uh, inappropriate there. We have some moderation, but it uh, will take some time. And then we can, uh, we can read some of the questions and we can just uh, improvise uh, some of ours. First questions for you. Okay, okay, so let's see. Let me just take this out. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I can. I only can use one device. So <laughs> if I if I connect my mobile, then I lose that. <laughs> okay, who is who is Girard? <laughs> oh, that's Ben, of course. Okay, so this this hands up is um, is an open source uh, project that I created to um, demonstrate uh, subscriptions in GraphQL which is a real-time uh, feature that it's uh, recently um, released. And um, actually, this can be used for anything. So anybody can, um, can create uh, their own Q&A um, kind of environment. And you can use this for your meetups or conferences. So this is a little experiment. So if something fails, I mean, it's still, uh, still in development. So that's, uh, that's it. Nobody has any other questions? Um, Are people allowed to raise hands and ask questions? Uh, you don't have to raise your hands. <laughs> you actually just need to pause the questions. Are they allowed to raise their hands, like if they don't want to post a question? Oh, no, that's completely fine. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, raising your hands is OK, but they have to submit to being slapped in the face. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> they can choose the app or a slap. <laughs> By whom? Who is the slap? By you. You deliver the slap. Yeah, just very, <laughs> just very weak. It won't be delivered by his beard. It'll be delivered by Jeff. There's a question. I need a buy. <laughs> Let's turn it into a question. How do we turn this into a question? Oh, neat. Oh, neat? Question mark. <laughs> oh, a question for Jeff. Jeff, which mobile speeds? Suggestions are applicable to desktop. For my talk, um, if you your mic's not on. Oh, you need the, you need the mic. Check, check. Uh, so basically, everything for my talk is also applicable to to desktop. Uh, mobile is where you feel the pain more, uh, especially on 3G and even LTE with congestion and, and round trip time and that kind of thing. It, all, every problem tends to be multiplied. Uh, but if you have a, a desktop app and you like your users, then you should use everything that was mentioned in the talk too. When you get into things like pre-rendering, that's when you, the, the cost of supporting pre-rendering right now is, is still kind of high, like the developer cost of supporting it. So those are where it's like the, the payoff may not be as high as, as it is with mobile. How can you find your own Minko so that you don't feel that pain of pre-rendering so much and you have knowledge and expertise? We can hire Narwhal for one. But, uh, Narwhal is your personal Minko. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, Chrome has a lot of good information, like the developer, uh, developers, developer.google.com or developers.google.com? One of those. They probably developers. redirect, so. Okay, developers.google.com slash web has a lot of great content explaining what, how things get loaded and parsed and rendered and how to um, optimize things and do things properly. So that's, that's probably the best place to look to understand everything I was talking about. So option A, become an expert. Option B, hire Narwhal. Mm -hmm. And I'll, if you hire us, we'll just tell you to go read the, the docs. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, I'll pay you to tell me what to do. It's hard to know which links to go to. It is. It's worth paying someone just for that. It is. That's what ng doc is all about, to know which links to click on. Do we have another question? Yes, you can hit it. Oh, I can. You do this one. OK. 
So I'm going to stand because I cannot use the same connection. I only have one device, uh, <laughs> thanks to you know the Wi-Fi in the cruise, so I cannot moderate and show the questions. So I need to do it in one in one place. So I will be moving this uh, up and down. So can I still be a great coder if I don't have a majestic beard? beard. Well, beard, yeah. I think you can. There's nothing stopping you. I'll take this one. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a good question. For I you. mean, you can grow it. You know, you have potential. Stone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Our sugar's pretty good. Okay, yeah. But your husband's got a pretty good mustache. So, uh, actually, so Victor, m most people don't know this, but he's actually a pretty good programmer. And yeah, I'm okay. He doesn't have a very majestic beard. <laughs> I used to have a majestic beard. Uh, so I guess maybe at some point you have to either have one yeah. or, or yeah. be married to someone who has one. I guess. So yeah. Or touch someone who has one. Attach to someone in some way, or touch someone. Oh, yeah, like this. Stores. Beard stores. What stores? Beard stores. Uh, beard stores. Beard stores? Beard stores? Uh, I don't know about this. Why would I know about this? Yeah. <laughs> Never needed one. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this is why Victor doesn't have a beard. He doesn't want people tugging on it. Yeah, I don't like being touched. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Okay. I think you are safe with the code of conduct. You are mm -hmm. safe in that. Yeah, you're never safe with Jeff. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sure my I have a question. <laughs> so, what have you guys learned by building Angular last few years? Hmm. Um, it takes a long time to build a thing. Even rewriting a thing <laughs> takes a long time. Yeah. Uh, I've learned not to care about what people think as much, <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of. Uh, like in general, the community is wonderful and nice, um, but there are a few people who are like slightly more difficult, you know. And at first, when I just joined uh, the team, yeah. like I took everything personally. It was very hard. And after a while, like you know, I'm doing my best, whatever, you know. So <laughs> like you I'm trying to do my best. Genuinely. You met mean people on the internet. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, just like you don't expect the amount of meanness that will come your way once you start doing open source, or like on a major project. Uh, it's a lot. Yeah, mm. people. If you if you've got an issue open that you're assigned to, yeah. and you tweet about doing something fun on the weekend, people get angry that you're not working on <laughs> yeah, fixing exactly. that issue. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's weird. Aaron and I never encountered any meanness on the internet. Never. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> never. Okay, we have another question, and it's a little bit general. Like, how is this to integrate with GraphQL? I mean, as no as you know what you are doing is very easy. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's the uh, Apollo uh, does a the Apollo libraries do a great job of making uh, bindings in different frameworks. To, I mean, they have like a, their own little kind of layer on top of GraphQL, but they're also involved with contributing to GraphQL. That they have their client libraries, server implementation. Yep. I think that make uh, make it pretty easy. Like their Uri Goldstein works on the Angular integration, and it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. So if the question is, how easy is it to learn GraphQL? Uh, I mean, it depends on your background. If you have a background in like type systems, it's super easy. If you don't have, it's not as easy. Uh, still possible, you know, like it's the same question as how easy it is to learn SQL, you know, like SQL, you know. Uh, if you see it the first time and you don't understand the idea of like data sets and set manipulations, it may be like challenging at first, but then once you get it, like it's Comes easy. Okay. Next question. What uh, to everybody? What is the best feature of Angular? Let's start with Aaron. That you can track your dependencies, like who depends on what, so that you're able to shake out all the dependencies. You can know who uses you. I think that's the biggest, one of the biggest wins. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we have a winner. The rest of you guys are <laughs> probably useless at this point. Mm -hmm. But let's let's go ahead and just yeah. ask everybody Might else. Might as anyway. well ask them though. Yeah. yeah, we want them to feel good about themselves. Go ahead, Aisha. Go. Well, I mean, uh, code tree shaking really helps me to build thinking that I will reuse everything, and I feel much freer to keep writing the components, even though I don't use it, and it feels really great. So I'm going to say code sharing. Modularity. Code sharing and modularity. Wow. I think that well was actually better that. than yours. So now we you kind of answer shared. Yes. 
Answer shared. Yeah, but she said it better. No, she did. <laughs> yeah. And it's, those two are still useless, but let's make them feel good anyway. Go ahead, uh, Victor, uh, what about you? So there are two features that I like the most. One of, of them the is... Router. Uh, no, the router. No, like the router I think is pretty good, but you know, on that aside, uh, I like that Angular is built like with TypeScript, and it works really well with TypeScript. I think better than other frameworks, uh, partially because the source code isn't fully in TypeScript. Uh, and I think TypeScript is a huge productivity boost to any web developer who works on a major project. Uh, that's one. And two, uh, I like that Angular works really well with RxJS. Uh, and again, it's built... Really well with what? RxJS. Uh, thank you, Ben. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Uh, ben. Ben. Thanks, Ben. Again, because from the very beginning, we, we knew it's going to be important. I think like a few major parts of the framework were designed in a way that is very RxJS friendly. Like forums, the router, you know, the van handling, so those two. Okay, um, Jeff. I, I guess I'd go with the easy answer and say the compiler. It's just magical how it takes so something so declarative and turns it into something so uh, that you can do so much cool stuff with, like the AOT. Um, and um, even compared to Angular 1, like the new compiler is just really cool. Cool that the new rules, like scope inheritance is gone and there's like a simpler model of, of context and um, a, a something more powerful at, at uh, different teams, working on different parts independently and being able to, to do things. And How many unicorns were killed to produce that compiler? I don't, I don't know. You'd have to ask Tobias. He always came in with unicorn blood on his hands yeah. every morning. <laughs> so <laughs> if it was every morning over, I don't know, two or three years it took us to write it, that's yeah. it. Hundreds. Hundreds of unicorns. Hundreds. Mm -hmm. Hundreds yeah. of unicorns. Hmm. Those are good answers. I like your guys' answers. I think though your f your other answer, the, the uh, router, that was actually a really good answer because I think one of the major weak points of Angular JS was the router that just yep. didn't have much in the way of feature set to it. So putting in a router with all fe a feature set and making um, Angular UI completely obsolete was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, we have a winner. What's the best practices for a CEO in Angular? CEO. Oh, now. <laughs> okay, no, that's a, this, this one just got the top. Are any of you better singers than Joe? That's better, I think. Go back to the other question. <laughs> no. Which question are we? Any of you think that can sing better than Joe? I want to answer the SEO question whenever we get to it. Yeah, All right, let's, 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 let's briefly go over the singer question and get to the okay. SEO question. I can't. Okay. I can but won't. But you won't, right? Yeah. That makes sense. Jeff, can you? No. no. We can do a challenge. Okay. Nope. We'll because see a karaoke. Way more karaoke yeah. than I do. Yeah, no, I have more fun than you do, <laughs> but I'm not a better singer <laughs> than you are. His presence is strong in karaoke. Okay, okay SEO. What's the best practices for SEO? So okay, S SEO, yeah. We have, I started a blog series on this on our blog uh, where I cover some of the important stuff. Uh, and I still have like one or two more to add to it. But actually, I have a talk too that I'll, I could, whoever wants to know, I have a really good talk that goes into depth on this in like 20 minutes. Um, but uh, there are a few things that, that you need to get right. So crawlers have gotten a lot smarter about being able to crawl JavaScript applications. This, uh, Google crawler has, other crawlers are still kind of figuring it out. Um, but um, yeah, it used to be you, have to, you had to give it more hints on how to parse your content. Now they can actually somewhat reliably run JavaScript applications and um, see the content and index it and, and do it well. Uh, but sometimes they don't, and like sometimes they have issues uh, at parsing your content, which can be any number of things can cause it. And I think what I've seen the most uh, prominent cause of, of search engine issues with pure Angular apps that aren't being pre-rendered is performance. So the crawlers, the, when they try to run your page, they'll time out at some point and either give up on parsing your page or take the page as it is. And so if your page is taking over five seconds to load, for example, uh, it, to show content on the screen, the crawler may see only a partially rendered version of your page or just give up and not index your page. Uh, so getting performance right and, and hitting targets, and five seconds is actually what most people recommend to, to hit uh, in order for crawlers to be able to understand your content. Um, so getting performance right is one big part of it, but also pre-rendering is something you should be doing if, if SEO is something you rely on. Uh, even though it's not strictly necessary, it's still a good idea and, and uh, it, it can be an easy way to screw up your SEO if you, if you don't get performance and 
probably pre-rendering, right? So are you saying that you really should be doing pre-rendering? If, if you rely on SEO and you'll hurt if you like, get bumped from the index, if you screw something up, then pre-rendering is like the fallback. Like if for whatever reason it can't parse your front end application, pre-rendering is good. Is there a way to know? No, if it's go necessary. That Google's crawling it w well or not? So Google Webmaster Tools is a great tool to see how Google uh, parses your page. There's a, there's a thing in there you can say fetch and render, and Google will fetch a URL you give it and then show you left side like what the what it sees when just loading the, the DOM from the server, and then the right side of how it rendered your page with JavaScript and whatever. And so it, it's a good practice if, if you're serious about SEO to check that every time you do a push to production, check like the key parts of your application to make sure it's able to render your page as you would expect it. Uh, but the, the official recommendation from the Google, like the crawler people is pre-rendered, pre even though we're smarter, still pre-rendered. Can we also hire Narwhal to Yes, it's, we've, we've, we've helped in such engagements to help fix big SEO issues. Any other, anything else from? All right, next question is, what is the best debugging tool? What is the best tool for debugging RxJS? Let me just head you off that nobody can say Ben Lesh is an mm, answer. He is though, just slack him up <laughs> on the, <laughs> the your slack. Yeah, send him your application. Uh, it's even okay at two in the morning, he'll get up and work on you it. You just have to have some kind of skill he needs, and then it's like, like he asks me some angular questions every once in a while, so we work out. It's so a tip for tap. Maybe figure out something he's trying to learn, or like dancing lessons or something, and, and then I'm sure he'll reciprocate. Cool, anything else, guys? Uh, I was tools? using the Redux tool with the NGRX store, mm -hmm. and I really enjoyed the library itself, too, and the Redux d dev tools were amazing. Mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, Stepping cool. through, so simplifying how you're composing observables is one thing. So like avoid massive chains that are doing a bunch of crazy things in them, it's like separate it into services or whatever so you can individually test things and uh, test them, just analyze them a little bit more in isolation. And um, stepping through in your, in your browser and understanding how combinators work, a good tool is the RX Marbles website. I forget what the URL is for, but like a website that illustrates how different combinators work. Uh, yep. So you can see. The one that I encourages this, you to use long chains. Does it? <laughs> well, not really. It, it, it shows how, hey, mm -hmm. you could just do a whole bunch of small things and. Usually long chains are a smell, like it, like something's, you're doing something wrong when you have something Ooh. that, like in a component, if you're doing a bunch of operations, one, you're making it less testable, or like you have to do a lot more work to be able to test it correctly and mock a lot more things behind the scenes. Um, but, uh, and then it makes it a lot harder to debug too. Yeah, I think that's actually the major thing I have that I do not like about Rx in JavaScript or any sort of library like this in JavaScript is that JavaScript is an inherently imperative language and as such, all the tools uh, are based around, or dev tools are based around the notion of a stack so like you, you step through and you examine the stack. So the instructions have stack. And once you switch from this, you know, I step through into like I pass the context, like either by, by promises or observables or whatever, you know. So uh, you lose the stack, you use it like the stepping through. And uh, right now, that, like I think for promises, there are some advancements. So you can kind of sort of step through if you use async await, you know, kind of sort of works in the newest versions of Chrome. Uh, but then it's sort of special case for you know for that particular use case, so uh, it's not the issue with the primitive itself. It's more like the language or the dev tools were built for the imperative part of the language, not for for uh, for X. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we have a last question, and um, so this is uh, this is for you, I see you. So if I wanted to build a three D wall, I could walk around in using gear, VR, or cardboard? Where should I start if I wanted to build that? Um, so there are lots of lots of free tools. Um, Autodesk Play, which I was working at, uh, is one of them. It's in beta, you can ask to join. Um, and also Sketchfab has amazing um, models people share for free, and they're really, really, truly amazing. Just go play with them, they're really nice. and. Um, yeah, cardboard is very cheap, and there's no you know, reason to not to enjoy these technologies. They're so much fun. Uh, you can watch NBA games. My husband watches every Tuesday. So just think about that. Get one. <laughs> okay, cool. 
Well, thank you, thank you very much for your answers. Um, I don't know if you want to, um, if you want to wrap up, uh, Joe. <laughs> I don't want to wrap up Joe. Well, he's fine the way he is. So. Okay, so uh, thank you for your questions and uh, for being here. I mean, it's been a, a, long, uh, a long week and there's still a few things to, uh, to do today. So I hope you, uh, you have enjoyed. Um, so let's, um, okay, now you want it. Okay. <laughs> I, I have one question for the crowd. Who here has a sunburn of some kind? <laughs> Whoa. That is a lot. That is a high percentage of hands. <laughs> that is a high percentage. You guys, neither of you, did Barely you, did either of you two step off the boat? No, I, I, I did twice. Uh, once on the first island, and today we went for a short walk. Was it like a thirty-minute walk? Mm -hmm. Thirty-minute walk. Wow. That's you more than are, enough. You, you gotta get your really steps in. Yeah. More than enough. I'm afraid of anything that is nature-related. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid of the ocean as well. The whole, like every night I was sleeping, like the ocean is right behind, like, you know, right there. If it sinks, I'll die in the ocean. That's like, you know, it was very hard the whole week. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, <laughs> genuinely, I was very scared the whole week. Victor is far more dense than the average human, so he sinks, he doesn't float. <laughs> All right, let's, do, can we do one last question? One last question, and that is, your favorite thing that you've done while being at the NG Cruise event that wasn't either in this room or in the other room? Favorite thing that you've done wasn't like here? Start with whoever. So I worked late one night with Jeff and with Schwarty and with Brokey. I had a lot of fun. That was. Uh, I don't really get a chance to do that kind of stuff at conferences. Well, the conferences I organize. So being able to hang out and work really late. We were up in the solarium. Everyone was getting food, and we were just writing code till like 2 in the morning. And it was I had a lot of fun. So Tomato salad. Tomato salad. It's a thing. And check it out. I just hang out on, on water with uh, Ben Lesh and Tracy and... I know a few other people. We were just back to back. This so is I didn't when you guys were all faces. tied together. Yes. You're in these floating chairs. On the sandbar. On the sandbar. So yeah. All tied together. You really did. Elliot, like Elliot was pulling them around. Oh. Is, that, is that who was maneuvering, navigating? Yeah. Oh. It was fun. Victor? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, I touched the ocean. So we you, you touched it. <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we went for a walk a few days ago, and I really went and touched it with my finger. It was and really like awkward. Everyone was staring at him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want to be in the ocean, because like the ocean, who knows what's in the ocean? I, like, I carefully touched it and walked away. Most of the people that touch it die, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, so uh, I was lucky. You're for, lucky. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because I haven't touched the ocean for like uh, years, you know, for eight years, even though I live in the surf. Tell us like about your boyhood in Vladivostok. Yeah, Russia. like we had the ocean there. <laughs> Like scary. He swam with narwhals, he claims. Yeah, yeah, not, not swam. We, I'm pretty sure we had narwhals in our like aquarium, and I know they don't like. They don't survive in captivity. In captivity. Yeah. So I'm actually curious how they like, <laughs> what happens there. Like you know, we I clearly Probably saw. Probably duct taped them. on some tusks. <laughs> on a whale. Well, it's just yeah. a dolphin. Yeah. No, it wasn't a dolphin. Because a I remember it's that. It's narwhal. You know? Stop asking questions. It's, I remember some sort of tusk-like thing sticking <laughs> out. You know. <laughs> Maybe a walrus tusk? Was it like a downward tusk? <laughs> no, it was like one. Okay. So, Victor, you touched the ocean, but I have a question. Did the ocean touch you back? Oh, <laughs> oh. no, no, no. Deep. No? No, mm. I, like, I, I hope the ocean didn't touch me back. <laughs> you <laughs> didn't open your heart? It tried. It reached down. Let it yeah. Yeah. Pull you reached in. down. <laughs> He's sick <a> kid. <laughs> he denied the ocean. All right, Jeff? Um, I'm just hanging out. It's fun. Like, meeting lots of different people and, and chatting about things. People didn't complain about Angular too much to me, so that was a positive experience. Nice. If Frosty did a little bit, but no, we're that's cool. not true. Okay, you're lying. Angular, I mean, you just said you were like this, so this was really hard to liar. build in Angular two. I was like, talk, talk to Tobias. Mm, uh, no. I did say that actually. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, thanks everybody. We appreciate oh, uh, the time you. that you guys take took. What did yeah, you this do? Was fun. Me? Oh, yeah, you're. Yeah, you Joe. Uh, I would say I was actually touched by the ocean, Whoa. like going s going snorkeling and seeing the okay. fish down there. That like I've never done that. That opened up a whole new a whole new. Oh. Did they get you right here? Oh. They got me. 
It got me right here. It under really the sea? Did. Yeah, under the, <laughs> s the sea. <laughs> it really did. That was super cool. Right? I really, really, truly enjoyed that. So that was my favorite thing. Big G. Oh, for me, the best was uh, having this, like, never-ending breakfast. <laughs> Like, I was finishing my breakfast and then thought, oh, what about pancakes? What about second <laughs> breakfast? <laughs> Banana pancakes. And they said, yes. And I was like thinking, maybe it's too much. No, OK, it's OK, it's OK. <laughs> so that's something I, I only did here. I usually don't do that. I mean, I, I think I've eaten like double every meal. <laughs> that was fun, yeah. <laughs> Cool. Turn over to Tracy. Okay, Tracy. Amazing, guys. 